Hey everyone, the artificial trainer here. Welcome in, welcome back to my channel. I've got a workflow I've been chasing for a while now. I finally put together a great Vase 2.2 infinite extension workflow, which has very little, if any, color shifting. It is not chaining image to image together, so you don't get those jerky movements at the end of each context window. We're using overlap frames and blending them together with vase in order to accomplish the infinite extension with very little color shift. So to get the workflow, you're gonna head over to my Patreon. But before we do the workflow, let's go through the model downloads. So if you check out the description below, you'll see a model download section. There are a lot of models for this workflow. Um, and this is a workflow that does require a bit more VRAM. The reason being that any quantization you do on the model makes the color shift worse. So if you're using, you know, GGUF models, you're going to get even worse color shift and it's going to be really hard to clean up the color shift to get good temporal seams. And I'm going to mention the phrase temporal seams a few times throughout this video. That means time seams. So between each 81 frames or whatever frame length you decide your videos should be, there will be a seam where the next generation starts. And that is what is referred to as a temporal seam. And that is the challenge with this workflow is how do we clean up those temporal seams? So that is why we're using FP16 models here. You can definitely try it with the FP8 scale than the GGUF models, um, just replace them in the workflow. But that is the reason why I'm using the larger models. All right, so the way you read this is I'll just get my Comf UI folder up here. So I have my Comf UI folder. I'm gonna go into the models folder. And then this first section, all these model downloads go into diffusion models. So into diffusion models. The second section, all of these go into LoRa's. LoRa's. The next one, all of them go into text encoders. And then the last one goes into VAE. And before you get started on downloading Crea, you're going to need to download to accept the Crea terms of service. So I've accepted them on my hugging face. But if you don't see this here, you'll see a little button where you need to accept the terms of service. And then you need to click that before it lets you download the files. All right. So once you have all of the files installed, you can head to the Patreon post in the description below. So this is the infinite extension workflow. This There will be two workflows. One is the infinite extension, and then the second is a cleanup pass to be able to fix those seams. And then I also provided a bunch of images here that you can use to, te to do the test exactly the same way that I'm doing it. All right, so download that extend.json. and then drag it into ComfyUI. So I do have a Crea generator if you wanna do all of the generation on the fly. Cause I have a first frame, I'm going to delete this subgraph and just use a load image node and drag my first frame in there. All right, and then, like I said, I'm going to delete the Flux Crea generation. And then I'm just gonna resize Actually, the image is already 832 by 480, so I don't have to resize this. All right, and then bring that into the start image. Okay, and then if you want to generate this whole thing as 1280 by 720, you can. But because we're going to do the cleanup pass at the end, I just upscale it to 1280 by 720 there. Um, and it's faster to do the initial, you know, the infinite length generation it takes a long time. So that's why I ideally like to do it like this. The other thing you're going to want to look at is overlap. I tend to like a smaller overlap. You can go as high as you want. You could do a 41 frame overlap if you want. But I found if you do too much overlap, the, the model doesn't have enough time to shift off of the initial motion that it was doing. And you just kind of get a very similar motion over and over. Whereas with seven, I find you can change the motion quite a bit and change camera motion and p how people are reacting and things like that. All right, so I, I recommend sticking at seven and trying it out. And if you don't like seven, then you can go to another one. All right, and then we have an image to video pass. 
So let's put a our second frame. And I have a prompt already created for that. So we're just having our character crouch down. I created all of these with quite an image edit. And that works pretty well for being able to, you know, a uh, keyframe uh, an entire scene. All right, and then I'm just gonna drag in the rest of my images here in sequence. If you download this workflow, I've already prompted them out. You can just drop the images in and you don't have to worry about coming up with a data set to do this with. You can just take mine and make sure the workflow is working before you go off and create your own data set. All right, and then just drag the rest of the images in here and then we will give it a run. I think it'll be, you know, maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes for this one. But while that's generating, if you want to make it even longer, so each of these is 81 frames minus seven because that's our overlap. So if you want to add another set of frames, you just copy these three nodes, paste them in, and then connect up the last extended images and bring the next extended images out. And the other thing is the end image is optional. So if you just wanna do this all by prompting, you could pull all the end images off. And it will just follow your prompts, but I found that it does not do a great job of following prompts. Vase isn't really meant for just pure image to video. It needs control images or control guiding frames to be able to do its magic. All right, so let's let that run and I will see you when it's done. Okay, so here is our initial result. It's pretty solid, but you can definitely see some color shifting in there. You know, it's right around every 81 frames and also it's pretty artifacty. We don't have great resolution. So definitely some color shifting, not great quality. And that is what our temporal seam cleanup is gonna do. This is a paid workflow. This is the first time I'm doing a paid workflow. Um, this workflow required quite a bit of time for, for me to put into it. And it's also something that's been highly requested. So it's free to my $10 a month Patreons, or you can just pay $10 for it. And I've made it really easy. Um, it's literally just a, one subgraph. You input your image and your width and height that you want, and you get your cleaned up image. So. Let's pull this into our other workflow so that we can compare the results. I'm gonna save this preview, upload it in here. Uh, let's just reload this node so that you guys know that this is the workflow doing the work. And then there's also Rife in here. If you don't wanna interpolate here, you can bypass that, but you can see we're at about 303 frames. So I would expect somewhere, you know, mid 500 frames after interpolation. All right, so let's bypass this first section for now. And then let's run the the artifacting and decolor shifting workflow. And you can connect all of this together if you want. I just find if you make your workflow too big, you could run into VRAM and RAM issues, which is why I tend to break mine up. All right, so here is our completed video. So left is the original, right is the cleaned up version. You can see how much better that one on the right is. I mean, there is very, very little color shifting. You can, if you really, really are nitpicky, you can pick out the color shifts, but it is tough and they're much more blended. So it's not like a quick flash. You'll get maybe some transition into a slightly different color, but it's much less noticeable that way. And then, I mean, you can tell the difference in the quality, right? Between the one on the right, the one on the left, the quality is night and day. So this is probably one of the coolest workflows I've put together so far. Really, really useful. It kind of puts to bed that, uh, you know, AI generation can only be five seconds. So hope you guys like this one. I hope you guys will subscribe to my Patreon, support me on Patreon. You know, I do a lot of free work. I do a lot of free troubleshooting in the Discord. This is a great way to support me as I try to build my business, my channel. That being said, if you need some help on anything, head over to the Discord. I'm always willing to help out there and troubleshoot there. There's also some other people in there that are very knowledgeable who can also help troubleshoot. So that is it for this video. I appreciate you watching and I will talk to you again in the next one.